Uh, thank you, uh, Rajdeep Ji. And uh, as Priya on the right side started with Delhi, and before we go to AAP, uh, back to Delhi, uh, I was wondering what is my role? Because I was added as speaker yesterday, and I got the subtitle after dinner. Now I kind of figured it out. I think Ram Madhav Ji and Saurabh in India Foundation said before, Delhi talks to Delhi, take them all over the world and bring them back to India. So that's what I will try to do, because I'll take you to Russia, Ukraine, Washington, DC, and then you know Samuel Huntington in the back. Um, when I was told to speak yesterday, um, initially I looked at the title. Um, it says, you know, Meta Era. Recently, I just read that the Facebook has changed its company name to Meta in October last year. Since then, their stock has not been doing well. In the last three months, their stock has gone down more than 40 percent. And uh, I think uh, Mark Zuckerberg has lost more than $50 billion. Then yesterday, I said, oh, my goodness, Meta era, if India 2.0 rebooting towards Meta era, I was praying to Lord Shiva in Buddha, saying, I hope it doesn't go towards matter the Facebook company, but the matter the technology era. You know, so that was my first prayer. Um, and then, obviously, uh, you can sense I flew all the way from Boston, 20 hours, landed here. I'm going back straight. That means it's midnight uh, in Boston. I'm a bit jet lagged. So if I sound sleepy, you should blame my jet lag. Um, uh, not that I'm not. Uh, uh, not that I don't want to be an active uh, speaker uh, per se. Now, the title uh, of the uh, talk, we were asked to speak on uh, future of uh, liberal democracy and the uh, you know, role of technology and demography. I will stick to uh, you know, uh, the, the future of liberal democracy and a bit of uh, technology. First, because the, this topic is so vast, First, let me start with an example where democracy and technology meet. Uh, in the case of uh, war in Ukraine, um, I'm sure you all have watched in the news um, where a son in Ukraine, because you know there are several million uh, Ukrainians in Russia also, a son in Ukraine calls his father in Russia, saying that now the Russian army has destroyed our house, is destroying our village. The father doesn't believe it. Father says, no, I'm watching Russian television. There the Russian sol soldiers are treating you very well. They're doing none of this. And the niece talks to her aunt in Russia, saying these things are happening, but the aunt in Russia refused to believe. So you can clearly see technology does not necessarily mean protection or promotion of democracy. Technology can be used to harm and, in fact, you know, prevent uh, democracy and freedom. Because the Russia, Putin has used news media and technology in such a way that Russian people actually believe what the government is telling them. So that's why there's 80% support for you know, uh, the uh, Ukraine war. And Putin has 80% approval rating. Uh, with that, I think Joe Biden could, have, you know, could win the uh, 2000, yes, in November as well as uh, 2014. So he has more approval rating than American president, or I think any president uh, anywhere in the world. So with this misuse of technology, it raises the issue. If India 2.0 politics, how will India use technology you know, for or against people, or for or against democracy? Um, now, with that example in mind, let me first answer this question, is democracy in decline? The simple answer is yes. Uh, Raj, Rajdeep Ji uh, talked about in the last 20 years, there's been a lot of progress and use of social media in improving democracy. But Freedom House, which comes out with Freedom Index every year, says that freedom has been declining in the world for 16 consecutive years. And also there, many other research has come out saying democracy is reg regressing for almost two decades. Now, we all know Samuel Huntington's book, The Third Wave, which showed linear progression of democratic system where more and more countries, from first wave to second wave to third wave, democratic system increased around the world. But in the last two decades, it has regressed. 
less number, fewer number of countries are adopting democracy. In fact, more number of countries are adopting autocratic system. So clearly in the world now, in the future also, there is a you know, divide between democracy and autocracy. Now, with this uh, clash that's going on, um, the, in the autocratic side, China is leading, Russia is leading. And not just, uh, 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 not just what you call China model uh, is considered popular and is being followed by many countries in the Middle East and many, many countries in Africa, even few countries in Europe and Asia are trying to emulate Chinese model of what they call autocratic capitalism or development without democracy. So this is a fact. Now, not just they are following or emulating the you know, autocratic uh, system, but they are buying technology from China to repress its own citizens, like Putin or Russia has successfully misuse technology to, you know, uh, to mislead people in Russia about Ukraine war. Many of these countries are buying technology from uh, China. Uh, we know that you know, China is exporting uh, tools like firewall, like you know, uh, facial uh, recognition, and especially social credit system, which are used and manipulated to control uh, its citizens. And all these autocratic uh, governments have formed an alliance of sort now. So this is a fact. So yes, there has been a decline of democracy in the last two decades. However, the question is, is, is it the end of liberal democracies? Here, I would like to say no for following reasons. Yes, in the short term, autocratic system might be efficient, but in the long run, it cannot sustain. As you know, the British Lord Acton said in the 19th century, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Look at President Putin of Russia as an example. Absolute power corrupting absolutely. In broad daylight, and independent countries invade it. And Ukrainian people are, you know, I mean, uh, humiliated, and Ukraine is destroyed. And as a Tibetan myself, you know, who uh, suffered a lot during and after the occupation of Tibet, I find it a bit, you know, unacceptable. Even though Russia might have uh, security concerns about NATO, but to inflict so much pain and destruction upon Ukrainians with utter disregard to humanity and morality is unbearable. Hence, I will make an argument that war in Ukraine is a turning point in the rejuvenation of democracy and freedom in the world. Now people around the world see what autocratic system can do. Comparatively, democratic system might be inefficient and even messy at times, but in the long run, only democracy protects freedom. Democracy is not an end in itself, but a means to the alternate and of good and accountable governance. This is true domestically, but increasingly true internationally as well. Because we live in an, in an interdependent world, our fates are interconnected. We know for a fact that what is happening in Ukraine is affecting all of us. Just look at the price of gas and petrol. The idea of economics and trade alone Guiding globalization was always a dead end. Similarly, democracy and development are interdependent. Food and freedom are interconnected. One cannot do without the other. The interdependent model is more sustainable in the long run. Now let me conclude with the question, where does India fit in this democracy versus autocracy debate? Compared to China, India follows the model of development with democracy, whereas China makes the argument for development without democracy. So India's success will be a success of democracy. If India fails, it is a win for China. Then not only just in the Middle East and Africa, but even in Asia, including in South Asia, many might follow the Chinese model of democracy, uh, development without democracy. 
However, the recent development in Pakistan and Sri Lanka indicate uh, that the Chinese model does not necessarily lead to sustainable economy. Finally, for these reasons, in Politics 2.0, I recommend that India should reboot to meta era with development with democracy mantra. With the blessings of Lord Buddha and Lord Shiva, it is karmic destiny that democratic model will succeed. Shukriya, Jai Jagat, Jai Bharat, Jai Tibad.